Hi, and welcome to the MacGuffin Podcast. I'm Ed. And I'm Alan. And today we're here with another top five. Uh, today we're talking with the Oscars coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about our top five Oscar robberies. Things we think, you know, didn't get nominated or didn't win that should have. Yep, this is going to be a complete bitch fest <laughs> yep. going on. Wee! So You want to go first? Sure. Uh, let's go to my number five. Uh, my number five robbery... Uh, Man, this one hits kind of personal. It's when Gladiator won Best Picture over Traffic. I love Traffic. I think Traffic was the best film of that year. Steven Soderbergh won Best Director for that film. It's an important movie. It's a movie that, you know, talks about an issue that is really more essential today than, like, than it was when it actually came out. Um, Gladiator, to me, I mean, I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate mail for this but gladiator i think is a bit overrated you know i don't think it's ridley scott's best movie at all and um okay well i'll start with the hate in a little bit no <laughs> I, I, I here's what i'll give you i think traffic was the best directed movie that year okay i i, I agreed with soderbergh winning the oscar for for traffic uh-huh but I don't hate on Gladiator at all, and, and I think it's been, it, it feels like it has been kind of popular to kind of crap on Gladiator mm, okay. I, a little bit, but I, I, I have a lot of love for that, and, and my Russell Crowe makes my wife's knees weak. I mean, I can't complain about Russell Crowe. I just felt that that movie was, I mean, it, it was, uh, I don't know, like, it, it's a conversation we can have for, uh, yes. for a while, so. Yeah. But, okay, we put that one to rest. Okay. Yeah, let's put that one to so rest. my number five, I'm going to start, I'm going to jump way back to the beginning of the Oscars. The very first Best Picture winner, which is c kind of a misnomer because they get, kind of gave two Best Pictures, yeah. but the Best Picture winner that's generally listed is Wings. Yeah. Uh, 1929, I believe? Mm, yes, I think and so. It, uh, or, don't, 28. Somewhere around 28, the 20, 28. For sure, yeah. Anyway, um, it is the only silent film to win Best Picture. Problem with that is, it's not the best silent film ever made. Mm -hmm. Now, it's well shot. Mm -hmm. There is some thrilling aer aerial photography in it. Um, but when you consider just that year, Metropolis came out and Sunrise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both better s silent movies. Well, let alone, let's talk, you know, leave alone all the Buster Keaton and Char Charlie Chaplin movies that got overlooked in subsequent years. Right. I just, up to this point, it's the only silent film winner. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Right. Um, but, or nudge, nudge. But, uh, <laughs> anyway. Well, uh, you do need to give, like, a little bit more contest because I believe you said they did split it into two. Like, I think there was Sunrise did win, like, Best, best Picture for Artistic. artistic yeah. yeah, with Merit, which... It, back then, they, they used to give the Oscars at this big dinner party where that was paid for by studio execs, right. and it was used just as an advertising technique. It, um. Uh, um, so it was usually the best movie that our studio put out that year. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I mean, it's always been political, but I ju it just feels like that one's particularly stingy. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Like Wings, it, it's an okay movie, but Sunrise, Metropolis, I mean, that's Come those on. are like two Come of the greatest on. films ever made. All right, moving on to my number four. Uh, my number four uh, <laughs> Oscar robbery um, is a director who never won a competitive Oscar. Uh, that is Mr. Sidney Lumet. Uh, I mean, one of the great, great directors. Uh, I mean, you could go down the list. 12 Angry Men, Network, Dog Day Afternoon, Pawn Broker, and then uh, his last film, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. I mean, this guy was making quality stuff up into his 90s, and... I mean, he was one of those that, I don't know if his name is like a household name, like a Scorsese or a Hitchcock, but the dude was well known in the industry and he always made really, really good work. Uh, I mean, even The Wiz has its merits, but you know, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. And it's, he's on it's, down, he's on down. <laughs> it's a shame that, you know, for a guy who was so good at what he did and was so great at his craft, never winning a, a best director, uh, it's just mind blowing. To and me, on this so. one, no complaints from me on that, on yeah, that pick. Absolutely. So. Uh, my number four is, I'm going to use it as a wedge issue to actually talk, talk about a bigger issue, Hoop Dreams, getting mm. get, getting robbed for, not even nominated for Best Documentary. Damn it, why didn't I think of this one? Damn now, it, I should have thought of that one. I almost, I almost wanted to put, when thinking about the documentary category, I almost wanted to put Roger and Me in mm -hmm. their very similar uh, problem the year it came out, but Hoop Dreams... It's widely considered one of the best documentaries ever made. Right. That year, even critically, people were putting it on. Uh, critics were putting it on their top ten list almost universally. 
Uh, Rod, uh, Siskel and Ebert wanted wanted to put a campaign forward to make get it nominated for Best Picture. It is a great movie. You can go watch it now. It's still great. Yeah, and the <laughs> and yet it and but yet to some screwed up ass ar- arcane rules. It didn't even get nominated. Okay, so just really quick. First off, the committee that decided on who they would nominate for Best Documentary only saw the first 15 minutes of that movie. That makes absolutely no sense to me. And uh, and then just to continue on, the director of Hoop Dreams made The Interrupters, which got snubbed this year. What the hell? And that's exactly what I wanted to say is the Academy has a long history of screwing this category up. It's it's so messed up. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Come on. Was, uh, all right. I'm getting a little upset. <laughs> Let's move on to my number three. Uh, my number three is yet another uh, director that got passed over for a competitive director Oscar award. I can't believe that Hitchcock never won a Best Director Oscar. Um, I mean, yes, Rebecca did win a Best Picture uh, Oscar. That's definitely worth mentioning, but he did not win an, uh, an award for himself. I mean, he is... If you come up with like any list of the best directors ever, he would probably be within the top five of every list. Um, just classic, classic films. Uh, a guy who was a master, he was literally called the master. I mean, every film that he did was perfectly crafted. Uh, the suspense was amazing. He, he got like great performances out of his actors. We, we, just... we live in a world where Matt Damon and Ben Affleck have won an Oscar for best writing. And Alfred Hitchcock has not won a, an, a direct, Best Director Oscar. I mean, it's, yeah, it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it like that. Um, it's just uh, Alfred Hitchcock, you know, when 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 you think about him getting like that Lifetime Achievement Oscar, it's like, he, okay, thanks for making that up, but why couldn't you give it to him when it was like right there in front of your face? You know, he made like the best films every time. It's just, I don't understand. We, we may so. revisit that subject later. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> on to number three for me. Um, would be, let's go back to the 80s a little bit. Let me just straight out say, and I think I've said it before on this podcast, Whoopi Goldberg won the Oscar for the wrong film. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, okay. Ghost is fun. (laughs) I like it. I like the Swayze. It's good. I like her. She's the best thing in it. But she has never been better than The Color Purple. Right. She was nominated that year. It was nominated for Best Picture. Spielberg wasn't nominated for Best Director. Why? Because at the time, he was considered too commercial. Mm-hmm. Whatever the hell that meant. Right. And, you know, that was a lo- his, his latest snubbing and a long list of snubbings he had up to that point. Mm-hmm. And I feel that she fell under the shadow of, of his... Whatever that is, whatever cloud that was, mm-hmm. that that same year Geraldine Page won for the trip the trip to Bountiful, mm-hmm. which from what I understand is one of those let's give an old lady a career life you know lifetime achievement career award before she dies. Mm-hmm. Um, not to put anything, I mean, good movie. She was good in it, but I'm just saying, The Color Purple is a fantastic movie, and Whoopi is I think one of the main reasons for that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. That film. I think that film's a little bit underrated. I mean, when you think of like best Spielberg films ever made, you wonder if people mention The Color Purple. It's a great movie. It's really sad that it didn't win any Oscars that year. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to my number two. Uh, my number two, uh, Robbery, is probably one of the big ones. Uh, it, and incidentally, this was my f- formerly my number one. I just moved it simply for sake of variety. Oh, okay. All right. So <laughs> my number two is when... Citizen Kane lost Best Picture to How Green Was My Valley. Uh, you know, I, I I love John Ford, okay? John Ford is a great director. This one of is the even great a, ones. How Green Was My Valley is even a pretty good movie. Yeah, it, it's a good movie. The thing is, it's, it's not, not his c- best movie. I mean, no, it's not. clearly not his best movie. I and mean, it's not Citizen Kane. <laughs> and it is not Citizen <laughs> Kane. It's really unfortunate that when Citizen came out, it was... I mean, people connected it too closely to, you know, um, Hearst and... I mean, he pretty much destroyed that movie and pretty much uh, put Orson Welles' entire career on, on halt. Um, obviously, one of the greatest films, arguably the greatest film of all time, just so superbly made and so influential in, in everything about it. Um, it's just really sad that people back then did, just didn't have the foresight to say, hey, you know, this is going to be one of those classic films. Uh, I mean, to me, it's prob- it was probably like a political thing. So. Wells got screwed by Hollywood. Yeah. You know, so. uh, out and out. Alright, on to my number two. 
take another little time uh, time travel back to 1952. The winner of that year, The Greatest Show on Earth. Have you seen The Greatest Show on Earth? <laughs> Find five people that have seen The Greatest Show on Earth. <laughs> Those five people, ask them if they made it to the end. <laughs> you know why? Because it's not, it, it's long. It's long and it's kind of dumb. And it, it, it stars Jimmy Stewart as a clown. And it's got, it, it wasn't even Cecil B. DeMille's best movie. Uh -huh. But everybody voted for it because their friends were in it. It was one of those things where everybody in town had a hand in it. The reason it's a robbery, though, is because the same year came out what many people call the greatest musical of all time, Singing in the Rain, mm, yeah. didn't even get nominated. Wow. A lot of people like to think that, well, or maybe it was under the, well, Gene Kelly movie just won the previous year for An American in Paris. Mm. Nowhere near as good a movie. I think it's a good, like, last 20 minutes to a movie. Mm -hmm. um, but Singing in the Rain, my God. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. come on. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you that it was probably a little like, hey, An American in Paris won the year before. We can't give another music musical starring Gene Kelly another one the next year but I mean as time has shown Singing yeah. in the Rain is the classic like prototypical musical you know yeah it's really too bad it's really too bad speaking of too bad my number one uh, Oscar robbery uh, hurts in a in a personal way because it involves my favorite director Mr. Martin Scorsese oh man First off, he didn't get nominated for Taxi Driver. He lost his uh, he lost Raging Bull, Goodfellas, and The Aviator. All two actors turned directors. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, ordinary people, fine, fine film, you know. It's a good but movie. Raging Bull is better. The so much better. <laughs> it's the best film of the '80s and one of the best films ever made. One yes. of the great character studies. Um, Dances with Wolves. It's it's okay, you know. Kevin Costner. All right, sure, you know. But come on, dude. How is that film better than Goodfellas? Goodfellas is like the great gangster film you of think all I'm time. Funny? Yeah. Oh man. And then, uh, well, this one isn't as big. But when The Aviator lost a Million Dollar Baby, I didn't really like Million Dollar Baby. I I'm sorry, you know. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood has made better films, and The Aviator to me was much better than that. Um, Obviously, you know, Scorsese won for The Departed, and we can talk about whether or not he really deserved it that year, but he was, like, passed over so many times. Yes. He was almost getting, like, the Susan Lucci thing going on here. It's like, what well, the hell? So I think you've actually given me a great segue to my number one, which I kind of cheated on, because it's not a specific snub. It's the category of directors. Uh -huh. Because, honestly, we've already, we, you've already touched on two of them. Right. Hitchcock... Right. Never won an Oscar. Right. Scorsese got passed over for far too damn long. Right. Spielberg, far too damn long. Now, right. admittedly, you know, he made a he he got a couple of well-deserved ones. Yeah. But let's talk about some other some others that never won Best Director. Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. For God's sakes, yeah. really not one. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and let, let's you know. Uh, how about the foreign directors? Uh, Kurosawa, no. Mm. Fellini, no. Mm. You know, Jean Luc Godard. I mean, we we could sit here all day and list people that haven't won. A lot of people make the joke. It's a it's better company to be in the in the in the loser circle. Yeah, it almost is. Uh, it just goes to show that you know the academy more often than not don't get it right, especially with the big ones. Some sometimes it's a it's a matter of of the calendar year. Like let's say three, four great movies come out the same year, and you know there's only room for one. Yeah. But sometimes they just screw it up. Yeah. So. And, all right. All right. Well, that was. Uh, <laughs> l let us know what your top five outrages are for the Oscars. Oh yeah. They're they're coming up. We're, mm -hmm. we're trying to build the excitement. <laughs> and uh, hit us up on MacGuffinPodcast.com and please let us know your suggestions as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.